Hey guys, it's just Friendly Cosmonaut this time, and I wanted to do a devlog on a different game that I've been creating called The Crash Zone, and I wanted to talk to you about adaptive dialogue, or dynamic dialogue, or whatever you want to call it, but basically just dialogue that changes in response to game events. So this might be major events in the game, the plot, a quest, but also at its simplest just whether the player has actually talked to them once before. So do they react differently depending on things that have happened in the game? So for example, I have a receptionist right here, and the first time I talk to them, this is what they say. So they just welcome me to the reception. And then the second time, so they say something different. They know that I have spoken to them before, and they have something different to say. And I have actually, for the receptionist, written a bunch of these dialogues that it will kind of cycle through. But, as another game event that it's going to react to, all of these will kind of be superseded if I'm standing on their desk. So if I'm standing up here, they'll act surprised and tell me to stand back down. And then it will kind of resume with the normal dialogue. So we'll start simple with just this one, and I want to kind of explain how I've done this. So this right here is the code for creating a dialogue. And basically, what has to happen is I'm creating the dialogue object, and then there's a handover of information. So right here, I'm handing over the text, the portrait that's controlling kind of how the NPCs are looking when you talk to them. So all of these variables will be handed over to the text box for it to display. But... Before that actually happens, before all of these variables from the NPC get saved and handed over to the dialog object, it runs this event in the NPC. And this is kind of going to overwrite or choose the correct variables. So if I come over to the person object that I have, so I actually have just one object for all of my people at the moment, but what I'm able to do is depending on their ID, and I've set their ID in the room, so if we go to the reception, and for example, I just click on the receptionist right here. So by default, these will kind of be set to a random ID. So it will look like inst and then a bunch of numbers here. But you can actually overwrite that and put text that you want. So I've called this inst receptionist. And I've done that for a few of my important NPCs. So this one right here, if we come in and have a look, it actually will do different things depending on a bunch of different variables. So like I said, the most important thing that it kind of checks that will overwrite everything else is if the player is actually just on the ground, and if it's not, so it checks it by just seeing if the player is below a certain Y value, then it'll set it to that above ground dialogue. But if this check is false, if we are on the ground, then it will check some other things. So this NPC actually does respond to a quest, but I'll get into that later. But for the subsequent conversations, what is actually happening in a lot of the dialogue, I have a certain line that will trigger the what's called the D count, which all the NPCs, all the speakers have, and it will increment this value at some line of the conversation. So for giant dialogues, I might put it at the fifth line or an important line of dialogue that I want the player to get to before I say that you've spoken to that NPC enough and the next time I talk to them, I could start a different dialogue. But for simple ones like this, I often just put it either immediately or I can actually run a script to change what decount is. But you can see that's keeping track of how many times that you've talked to the NPC. So that's a really kind of basic way to do it, is to just, instead of checking any kind of variable about the player, you can have a variable that keeps track of how many times that you've talked to the NPC. So if I haven't talked to them, this is the conversation that plays. So a very simple one. And then next time you can see here that it changes slightly as decount is increasing and it resets actually once you've exhausted these lines. And of course my instances of this object aren't persistent, so if you want this to actually save between your game rooms, then you're going to have to save that decount in some kind of important variable, and that is actually what I've done. So in my data object that I have, the game object that keeps track of all the important things, for the moment I've just set up a map data structure that does keep track of this. And the cool thing about this is that I can use the ID of the instance itself, so this thing right here, as the key for the map. 
And then the actual data that I'm saving at the moment is just an array. And that's because I'm actually planning on storing more data in the future about characters. But for the moment, it's just filled with one entry. And of course, at the start, for all of them, it's zero because you haven't talked to them. So all of their D counts is zero at the start. And then, so when the people actually get created, what they do right here is they pull out their data from this global variable, right? So that global variable that I created right here. So it can go ahead and access that, use its own ID as the key, pull it out right here, and it's going to set its decount to whatever that entry of the data is. So it's going to set it to this value. And of course, in the game, this is going to be updated. And whenever the room ends, which is generally how these objects will end up getting deleted, so I've just put it in its cleanup event, it's going to go and update the data. Of course, it does have to check that an entry with its ID does exist because not all of my OBJ person objects are important. They don't all have a, a special ID that I've set up here, but for the ones that do, they're going to save their data so that the next time the player enters the room, the next time they get created, they're just going to pull out that piece of data from here. So you can see if I leave the room and come back, he will still remember that I have spoken to him before because it's saving that decount in the persistent game object. And it doesn't really have to get that much more complicated than that. I could just save this map once I actually finish this game, especially with JSON or something like that. So that's basically how it works. And now I just want to show you a different person, a different use of this. So I'm going to show you a quest and how you can get NPCs to react to something like a quest. So over here in the mechanics, I have this mechanic right here, Gianna. who we can talk to. And as you go through the dialogue, she tells you that while playing catch with a matter ball, she threw it up on top of some boxes and it got stuck and she can't reach it. And she needs to get it down because it's important for her work. And she warns against just climbing up on top of the boxes because they have been stacked a bit precariously and suggests to go get a ladder to get it down. Now, at this point, after I've been through that dialogue, if I talk to her again, so she says that she needs the Matterball, so already I've kind of I've overwritten that starting dialogue just as I did with the receptionist. But now, something else that's triggered in that dialogue is that I can interact with this Matterball up here, so I can actually climb up on top of the boxes and get it down. But at this point, something else that I've done is the receptionist has also changed their dialogue because I can actually ask them for that ladder. So if I talk to them, there is a new piece of dialogue. So I can say that I need a ladder. And then the receptionist actually says that they have given it to someone else and I can go look for it. But like I said, another thing that I can do is just climb the boxes. All right, and I can interact with this matter ball up here. So despite the warnings, you can actually pull to get the ball out. There we go. And if I hop back down, again, she's reacting to the fact that now I have the ball. And the way that I've done this is the action of picking up the ball is actually running a script to increment D count, right? That dialogue counter, which I'll show you in a second. She's happy to have the ball back. And now that quest is complete. And once more, if I talk to her, she's going to react to the fact that I helped her get the ball down. All right. So in the dialogue itself, actually, first I'll just show you the receptionist. So the receptionist right here actually checks Gianna's data to see if I have talked to her. So if D count is not zero, but it's actually one. And if it is specifically that, then the receptionist will change their dialogue to react to needing the ladder. And then over down in Gianna's dialogue right here, we can see all of the different checks that she's making. So the second conversation is when D count is equal to one. When it was equal to zero, that was the first conversation. So that was the quest dialogue. So right now, once it's equal to one, depending on whether the manual exists, and apparently I've actually, I've labeled these wrong. So if it still exists, if it's kind of still up on top of those boxes, then she just says that she needs the matter ball. But if it doesn't exist, so what actually happens is after 
you pick up the Matterball, I just destroy that object. So all she has to do is check if that Matterball does not exist. I could be storing this as some kind of data thing, but that's all I'm doing for now. So now she just changes it to react to the fact that I have collected the ball. And you can see actually on the 14th line, when I hand over the ball, you can see here that I've set up the 14th line of dialogue to run this script to change decount to two. So this is kind of part of the dialogue system that I've set up. You can actually have a line of dialogue run a script. So that's what's changing decount in this instance. So there you go. And then that is the final dialogue. So this does require a lot of work, but the result is a game world that feels a lot more alive because the people in it are actually reacting to what you're doing. And this is all going on under the hood, of course. You could be checking any variables to change the conversation. So you, you could check if the player has actually entered a room or not and have an NPC comment differently. I think the more that the game is actually commenting on your interaction with it, the more immersed you feel, the more alive the game feels. And if that is important to your game, if the story and the world is quite important, then having dialogue that actually reacts to the choices that you're making and what you're doing in the game, I think that really adds to the experience. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of how to set that up in your own game. I think I'll leave it there for today. I hope you guys are all well and I'll see you in the next video.